Hey guys, welcome back to XTA. Today we're going to talk about a launcher replacement that's intending to basically simplify things as far as when it gets to interacting with our launcher. It's not a launcher that has all the bells and whistles. We're talking about a launcher that basically you can hand over to your parents or your grandparents and they'll have no problem interacting with it. You can even give it to a kid and they'll be able to basically use it. But the main benefit of this is it's intending to make things simple. It works on any device. It's a launcher replacement. So let's check it out. So the mod that we're going to do today will actually enable us to interact with our system in this manner. Once we install the actual launcher itself, it's actually a, basically a replacement launcher for your existing launcher. So by default, I normally use the Nova Prime launcher on my phone. This is going to replace it. So pressing home no longer takes me to Nova. It takes me directly into the Koala phone interface. This is a, a launcher, a launcher replacement for your system. So again, it interfaces with everything on the device. You still have the ability of swiping down to be able to get your notification panel, your shortcut, but those things are not necessarily important unless you really need them. The interface is intended to make it simple enough that directly from the home screen, you have your SOS button in case of an emergency, you have your camera interface. It's a built-in interface for them. So you're using their camera app, not exactly the best camera app, but it does that job okay. When you go into the menu, you're greeted with a certain set of information. Messages, obviously, to send text messages, contacts to make calls, recent calls to be able to see who called you recently. The camera, of course, with the photos. Album, uh, alarm, basically just a simple alarm. You can customize and go back. We'll go back home. We don't need to change that. A flashlight, of course, to be able to use the flashlight, and it does work. Turn, starts turned on automatically. And as far as the apps, they have pre-selected three apps for you, obviously a browsing, email, and maps. You can edit them, add different applications, of course, or you could just say show all apps. Same thing. But you also have the ability of searching, which is a nice functionality in case you have a lot of apps on your device. Settings gives you the ability of customizing this UI. It doesn't actually come directly fully stocked with a gold membership. You do need to activate to that. The full feature set of this launcher is available to you for one week after you turn it on basically. If you install it, you have one week of trying everything. And after the one week, you end up basically going down to just the free version with a limited set of options. Theme, dark, again, just works better with my screen here on the Note 4. Text size, highlight, uh, the high contrast, animation, of course. Read aloud, screen rec uh, screen speech recognition is within the keyboard. I went ahead and chose the split ABCDE keyboard because by default it comes with the QWERTY one. It's hard for me to use. I'm used to a standard full-size keyboard. And the sliding keyboard was too cumbersome. So I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second. Key sounds, home button, obviously you have the camera, turns it on, tap to unlock, languages, English, um, allow the leading, of course, all of those just basic functionalities. Screen rotation, info, feed, you know, feedback, and all of that. Selecting the interface will enable you to set this as the default launcher. Selecting the SMS app if you choose to use one outside of the actual launcher itself. System button, hidden panel, and then system setting takes you to your normal system settings. Uh, it does not disable the functionality of the buttons on your device. So if you have, you know, your multi-app here, you can able to go back here. Pressing home takes you directly there. Home again takes me back to the main interface. You greet it with the time, the date, obviously the, the percentages of how much signal you have and battery and contacts. Uh, to set up a message, you say write, and you get you have the ability basically to actually use voice recognition, which is what we were seeing in the settings. It works nicely and it does really well. Problem is it's very, very slow. And it tells you that it's very slow. So it says speak slowly and wait. So we're not gonna try to test it too long, but we'll, uh, we'll go back and then you're able to go back home right away. It's simple, it's easy. It's really meant to be very basic in the sense of what it does. Now, one small glitch that I noticed with my system is the camera works on and off, but whenever I go to my library itself, as far as the photos, it practically just crashes. And I'm not sure if this is because it's trying to index my library and then over time it'll work better, uh, but essentially it literally almost as if the actual UI crashed. Okay, so as far as the actual application itself and what you guys saw on the hands-on, it's extremely simple, easy, and very intuitive. And I think it's that's the design of what it wants to do. It wants to become very basic for you and so easy to use that you can technically, in the way they're advertising this is, give it to a either senior member of your family that does have a smartphone that just got a new smartphone over the holidays or just has a phone that obviously is no longer the old style crudity phone, but necessarily a phone that has more functionalities but they're having a hard time using it and accidentally doing things. It locks them in within the system UI. You can lock the settings so that you don't have the ability of changing the different settings and it will work. It's consistent. 
there is a few bugs, at least the way it runs on my Note 4, and it could just be because of the way you know TouchWiz is running in the background, and your experience may be different. Uh, it, the actual, uh, as far as you know, the gallery app doesn't work at all for me. It just freezes the entire UI, and I can't get out of it. It literally almost crashes the entire launcher, relaunches itself, and then it works fine. The camera does work on and off, uh, but other than that, the, rev the rest of the features are pretty solid and they work pretty well. Uh, call is basically no different than how your phone would perform. So we're not really talking about an actual modification to your device. You're just replacing your launcher. So I'm normally using you know, Nova Launcher and I like more features and more functionalities, but that's the user level that I'm in. Uh, I'm not at the beginning level. So if you're giving this to somebody at the beginning level, this will be a great feature. And it could help you out a lot because I know if nothing else, a lot of the people that come here to XDA are more advanced as far as what they want out of their devices. And chances are at one point or another, you've helped somebody actually get, out, get into their device, understanding their UI and setting it up. So this could be a good help for you. Check it out, let me know what you guys think. I saw this and I thought this would be something just you know, nice to kind of review. It's different and it's unique. Uh, and I think their approach is working there. They just need to kind of work a little bit better as far as their software. As usual, like and subscribe to this channel, like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys soon.